On the 5th of January 1946, inside of the ruined city of Leningrad, which had suffered a great deal during the Second World War, a number of German war criminals were led out to a huge gallows structure for their executions. There was a large crowd that had gathered to see the executions of those who were deemed their enemy during some of the bloodiest days of the conflict, and the people of Leningrad were eager to see some reprisal for their suffering. The siege of Leningrad was the deadliest in history, and those men brought to the gallows had slaughtered and rampaged around the Eastern Front, and each of the eight men had been found guilty of partaking in a number of different crimes, and for the Soviets these men were the ultimate evil of the Nazi regime. But what did these men do? Join us today as we look at the disgusting crimes of the executed German soldiers of Leningrad, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. When Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union, was launched on the 22nd of June 1941, it became the deadliest and largest land offensive in history and campaign, and over 10 million soldiers were involved. It took Joseph Stalin, the Soviet dictator, by surprise, as he actually had signed a non-aggression pact with Hitler, and it was believed the two nations, who had very different beliefs, would not go to war for a period of 10 years, and the country then divided Poland up between them. But Hitler broke this treaty, and he wanted to destroy Bolshevism and communism. However, during the Eastern Front campaign, 3.8 million soldiers entered the Western Soviet Union along a front of around 3,000 kilometres long, and they were backed up by around 600,000 vehicles and more than 600,000 horses. This then opened up the Eastern Front, and it would become the deadliest theatre of World War II, and some of the biggest battles in history erupted. However, there were scores of atrocities and war crimes committed by the Germans along their way to their objectives and goals. The Nazis deliberately starved to death over three million prisoners of war, and millions of civilians died from the huge food shortages caused by sieges and blockades. But also the Einsatzgruppe, the Nazi death squads would follow up the German army's advances. They would round up civilians inside of settlements and villages and order them to dig mass graves. These civilians dug these large pits, and then in small groups they were led into it, and they were executed in cold blood by groups of executioners, and many of these crimes today have still not been uncovered, such was the wide-scale slaughter. There was more horror, as German forces would also burn villages to the ground, and would pillage homes and loot wherever they could find. Hitler also administered a number of illegal orders for Soviet commissars to be shot immediately, without any questions asked, and because of this, thousands were executed by this order. This specifically would later come back to haunt a number of senior Nazis too, as they were later condemned for their actions relating to the Commissar Order. However, one city which suffered to a huge degree during World War II was Leningrad, and the city was besieged for 872 days, and because of the conditions, over 1 million people starved to death. 400,000 of these people were children younger than 14, and the Germans and Finns blockaded the city and cut off food supplies, resources and other materials and prevented them entering the city. Because of this, rations got incredibly low and there was little to no food around and the Soviets had to resort to eating their own pets. And there were even accounts of cannibalism, with 2,000 people being arrested for this crime. It was pure desperation and the city also suffered heavily from the German bombardment which came daily from the skies as bombs would litter the city and would leave it in ruin. Eventually the siege was lifted, but the city was horrified by what had happened and those people were scarred by their treatment. And this led those inside the city to have the strongest anti-German sentiment and they believed that all Germans were evil and barbaric and at the end of the war they wanted some sort of revenge. They would get this at the end of the war, inside the walls of Leningrad, there were eight German soldiers who had carried out horrific crimes inside of the Soviet Union who were brought to their executions inside of a square. There were 11 Germans tried inside of the city of Leningrad, and the majority had committed crimes in the Piskov region, but they had been sent to the city for their trial. This was probably done to serve as a propaganda victory for the people of the city, and to give them something to shout about. Their trial was heavily publicised in the local newspapers and press, and as mentioned, eight of the men were sentenced to death. But what had these men done? The most senior of those condemned was Major General Heinrich Remlinger, who would, during the war, order 14 expeditions of German soldiers who would rampage in the Piskov region and would burn villages down. 
He was linked to the slaughter of 8,000 people, mostly women and children, and documents discovered linked him to this as well as testimony from eyewitnesses. His soldiers shot over 200 people in Kalamashevo, and 200 more were burned alive in wooden buildings in Utoragosh. The horrors of Renlinger's troops were many more. Another condemned man was Captain Karl Struffing, who shot 25 people in the Ostrov region. He ordered his men to shoot children and young boys with machine guns, and he was known for shooting 200 people himself with his own weapons. Aberfeldwebel Engel Fritz was part of a platoon that had burned seven villages, and these men shot 80 people and burned 100 in houses and in sheds, and the horrors of Fritz's actions were told to the courtroom. Oberfeldwebel Ernst Böhm was also found guilty of burning down villages such as Krivets, Olkakova and others in which around 60 were shot dead and Böhm himself shot at least six. Lieutenant Edward Sonnenfeld went on the rampage from December 1943 to February 1944 and he burnt villages with his men. In Zapolye, his men killed 40 and in another village named Saglitsky, Sonnenfeld's men ordered civilians to dig trenches they forced them in as his men threw grenades into the trench. Sonnenfeld took part in the executions, and the court reached the conclusion that he himself had killed around 200 Soviet civilians with his own hands. Yannicka Gergard was a soldier and was not of any rank, but in the village of Malia Lutsi, 88 civilians, mostly women, were driven into a barn and were burned, and Gergard was linked to personally slaughtering over 300 people. Soldier Irvin Ernst was also involved in burning villages, and he killed 100 mostly women and children. The final man who was condemned to death for his crimes was known as Irvin, and he was involved in the executions of 150 people, and in Lugar he burned 50 homes, and he was involved in burning other villages and around 200 homes. These German soldiers and senior ranking officers were viewed by the Soviets and those inside of Leningrad as evil, and the trial served as a form of revenge. But for those men sentenced to death, there would be little leniency shown, as they would be executed. A large gallows had been erected inside of a public square, near to the Kondartyetsky market, and this allowed a large number of people to gather. The crowds on the 5th of January 1946 came to see the proceedings and the executions of the German soldiers, and these people had seen suffering with their own eyes at the hands of the German military officers and the German Air Force, and they were wanting revenge. The crowd was huge, then the condemned Germans were brought out. One by one they were paraded in front of the crowd, and they did on the whole remain calm, except for General Heinrich Remlinger, who looked as if he was startled, and he looked for a way out, and he was panicked as his final minutes came. But if the executioner would have let him go, then he would have been torn to pieces by the crowds. The Germans were all loaded onto trucks, and on the back of them, and these were then backed up under the gallows, and the nooses had been thrown over the execution structure, for each of the men. One by one, the men had the nooses secured around their necks, then slowly the vehicles they were on drove off, and they were left hanging. It took minutes for them to die, and their bodies were left upon the gallows for some time, and it was noted that those who saw the executions did not cheer when they happened. The executed German soldiers of Leningrad had committed a lot of horrific crimes and slaughter across the Soviet Union but Stalin was keen to see his justice being served inside of some of the most suffering cities of the Second World War. It was a propaganda victory for Stalin, punishing those who were deemed despicable war criminals in Leningrad, a city which was devastated by the German onslaught. The men who were condemned were not involved in the deadliest siege in history, but instead attacked civilians and innocent people hundreds of miles away in other regions. But to the people of Leningrad, these men were all evil and deserve to go to the gallows that morning. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.